Hello, thanks for being here for this panel um, called uh, OSGI, why we love it and why you don't really need to care. <clears throat> I'll be here with three of my esteemed colleagues from Adobe. Thank you very much, folks, for accepting to, to sit on this panel. The idea of these panels is, uh, you know, in the in the I would say regular sessions of the conference, you're getting lots of action directly actionable information, which is great and very useful. Uh, for the panels, we took an angle to be maybe a bit more inspiring or tell you a bit of the stories of you know how we do things and why. And this is exactly this. So so uh, my three colleagues here are very experienced in uh, OSGI, and they have stories to tell about that. So that's uh, that's what we'll be we'll be doing. It's a pretty short panel. We have only 30 minutes, so we won't waste too too much time. Um, so I will first ask my colleagues to briefly introduce yourself and why you think I invited you to be on this panel. So starting in the order of my screen, Carl, you're first. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> Carl Pauls. Uh, I'm. I guess why I'm on this panel. Well, uh, uh, I got in contact with OSGI very early on, um, uh, actually, uh, uh, yeah, shortly around uh, the first version of its release uh, through uh, a visiting professor at my university called Richard Hall, um, who afterwards ended up uh, writing an OSGI framework implementation, um, first internally at FU, and then uh, he open sourced it as Oscar, um, and uh, we as students had to suffer for it and uh, use it. <laughs> so, so I actually had to learn it. <laughs> And then, uh, well, I stayed in contact with Richard, and uh, eventually uh, Oscar moved to Apache uh, and became Apache Felix, and uh, I, I uh, started contributing there um, and worked with OSGI uh, for a couple of years um, in various uh, companies and positions. And uh, then, well, I, I took a couple of years doing other things, um, uh, but eventually got back to uh, working on it um, when I uh, joined uh, Adobe and uh, AEM, um, which obviously is based on Apache Felix uh, a couple of years ago. And that's what I do right now. I'm, I'm uh, working for AEM, on AEM, with those other people here. And having fun doing so, <laughs> I hope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so... it's, it's easy with, with this kind of company, you know. <laughs> yeah. Next up is uh, David. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm David Boschart. Uh, I've been involved uh, with OCI since 2007 and was uh, the co-chair of the Enterprise Expert Group from 2009 right up until the end of last year. And I'm also involved now in the migration um, from um, the OCI Alliance to the Eclipse Foundation, which is happening at the moment. And besides that, I'm um, also a committer on Apache Felix. And uh, yeah, just a general uh, OCI um, kind of hobbyist. Thank you. Uh, Carsten? Yeah, as, as usual, I'm the last one, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> that's for your last name, Siegler. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's no, no way around that one. Yes, uh, yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Carsten Siegler and I'm a principal architect or principal scientist on, on AEM, working on AEM for 14 years now, initial, um, co-architect of, of what AEM is. And I started the journey when we moved to, to OSGI. Um, so I got involved very, very early there. And also then later on joined the OSGI expert groups like eight, nine years ago. And since five or six years, I'm also acting as on the, uh, on the board of directors for the OSGI Alliance and um, steering or steered the, uh, the future of OSGI. To Eclipse now. Thank you. Thanks, Carsten. So actually, so I'm going to ask questions to, uh, some of them will be targeted at one of you, but the others you should feel uh, free to, to, you know, uh, jump in. Uh, I think panels, panels where people all agree are boring. So feel free to disagree when it, when it makes sense. Um, <laughs> We'll try to not turn this into a fight, but make it uh, interesting. Uh, so, Carsten, the, the first question is is for you, uh, mainly for you, as I said. 
Um, so when when the, the CQ5, which is the ancestor of, of AEM, was created that day software, how come the decision was made to use OSGI? I think it was pretty new at the time. So why, what what was the idea behind that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, I have to say the decision was made before I joined, <laughs> so it's not not, not my fault <laughs> or not my my success. <laughs> but no, I think there are I, I would say basically three three major reasons for this. One of is one is that we wanted to have a component service based Java framework, right? Um, and around that time, there were basically two. One rhymes to to Sling, um, and, and the other one was was OSGI, um, and then OSGI seemed to be the more promising for us because it was pretty pretty small and then very very flexible. I think the the other thing was that we wanted to have dynamic updates and dynamic changes of configurations. Before that, usually, if if you think of a software like like AEM, uh, when you deploy an update, you had to basically shut down the server, do some maintenance or, or the update and restart the server. And sometimes just to um, do a simple configuration change. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we, we wanted to be more um, more flexible and then more, um, yeah, better in, in, in that respect, right? Without any, uh, applying changes without any, any downtime. And I think the third reason is basically um, modularity, right? Um, so on, on the one hand, escaping the, the Java class pass hell, which was very, yeah. very prominent at that time, right? You, you're you choosing five open source projects, put them on your class pass with all the dependencies and four of them work and the fifth doesn't and then you change the order and one other fails and the other one works. <laughs> things things like that, right? Um, but, but also we wanted to clearly separate between a public API that can be used by our customers and our internal implementation. And, and OSGI is basically the only solution in, in Java land that, that provides you that. So I think those those three are basically the the main reasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you think uh, maybe, maybe David, you think this is still relevant in the cloud world today? Or how, oh, yeah. you know, are there parts that are not relevant anymore? Like the dynamic loading, the, are we still using that? Or uh... um, I think so. The, the dynamic capabilities of OCI are very interesting, and um, but I think not in production. They're not used by many people, but still they find OCI useful to them, right? So OCI, as Karsten uh -huh. said, is a very small and lightweight container that really develops you. It helps you to develop your system in the right way, like by using the modularity, which you know kind of forces you to think about your system and come up with a proper architecture and in the end it really pays off because your system became stays more maintainable right it becomes easier to maintain and then there's the services the services are the highly dynamic part of OCI but you don't have to kind of exercise the dynamicity of it it might mm. be useful during development but in many cases, those services are really, really handy to have because you, they give you a nicely decoupled way of de developing your system. The fact that they are dynamic is nice, but you know it's not essential that you use it. Right. So yeah, I think I think it's still you know still really relevant, and the fact that OCI is so small is also very, very useful, especially in these days where you know want, you want cloud-based um, kind of microservices to be kind of small, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Small is interesting because some uh, uh, s some people consider OSGI to be a big thing, complicated. I know Carl, you've been working on very small uh, OSGI or OSGI-ish stuff. Can you tell tell us a bit about that? Well, I mean, I guess you know overall there's some 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 truth to it for sure. I mean, it's 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 complicated um, uh, because it deals with with a couple of complicated issues right so I mean you as always you have to differentiate between something that's that's complicated because it does something complicated um, mm. or whether you know how, how much complication does it itself contribute to the problem yeah right and then I think OSGI is, is, is at least trying to address um, a couple of different Issues and uh, each each of the, this uh, each of the, that issue um, um, is complicated in and of itself, right? So you have a, it's 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 a Java a module layer for Java, 
no, module layers are complicated. <laughs> yes. It's, you know, you can, it's it's a whole whole science part to it. Um, so it's that makes it complicated. I mean, certainly dynamism is is uh, uh, complicated um, uh, just just in in and of itself. So um, I think. In, in that sense, OSGI itself is not super complicated. I mean, the spec certainly has grown over the last couple of years, um, but it's still, it's still a spec. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it sometimes gets confused a little bit because we also have um, uh, specifications for lots of different services. Um, so so the, the overall body of work that is there is, uh, is, is much bigger than, than, for example, just the framework. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think the framework part, for the most part, is you know, is still still reasonable small, and uh, uh, you can wait uh, one time. Um, I mean, Felix still is is only half a megabyte big. You know. So, yeah. Right. So. Yeah, so it's reasonable. Yeah. Right? So it's not too I'd big like to and add, not, I'd like not to too scary. Add yeah. One David. little thing to it, if, if that's if that's okay, because you're sure. you're mentioning Carl that the spec is big, but the the spec itself is a lot of chapters, right? But every single chapter itself is pretty right. simple mm. and pretty small still. Yeah. And to in order to be like OSGI is not Java E. You don't have to implement everything. Right. You have the core framework, which is kind of the core functionality. And for the rest, it's pick and choose, right? You, if right. you like Config Admin, you take Config Admin. If you like DS, you take DS. If you like the resolver, you take the, re the or the repository, you take the repository. But you don't have to provide or implement everything at the same time. Yeah, it's a it's a modular spec about the modular system, which is really cool. Sure. You know, I, I, it's recursive, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the recursion of OSGI. We discovered something tonight. <laughs> But you know, I mean, Carl, yes. Which, which is a blessing, you know, as well as a curse. Which is partially a blessing as well as a curse, right? I mean, it's it it, it has it has advantage of that you can pick and choose, which is good. Um, but it, of course, always also it, it introduces some other complications, um, uh, because at least you know in 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 the Java Eve world, for example, you knew what you what you did get. Right. I mean, you wrote your war. You had you had the servlet API, and that that pretty much was what you cared about. Um, uh, if you have to pick and choose, you actually have to pick and yeah. choose, <laughs> which which can also be um, uh, yeah. a challenge. Right? Uh, the, in the title of the panel, we 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 say uh, you, that we're going to tell people why AM developers why they don't really need to care about OSGI. So what what uh, the, does the average AM developer, if there's such an animal, uh, what do, do they need to know or not? What can they safely ignore about OSGI, in your opinion? I, I think I, so I, I would I think, uh, go, go ahead, David. Oh, OK, I, I go. No, I go first. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think, first of all, if um, if developers use the the tooling and and the support for developing with with OSGI, which is out since I don't know four or five years, the, the latest the latest stuff, then they probably don't have to care that much about OSGI because you're just writing your your component, which is a plain more or less a plain old Java object. You use some annotations on top, and that's basically it, right? And then, you have a Maven project building, building your your bundle, and and that's it. Um, so, from from that perspective, it's it's similar to most of the other component frameworks in in the Java world. It's just that the annotations are named maybe slightly slightly different. And so, and annotations as as you, and tooling, you would say, annot between annotations and tooling, you're pretty pretty safe. Yes, yes, exactly, and it's and as soon as you want to deal with with dynamics, which usually most developers don't need to, right? Um, no. that, that uh, services come and go at and runtime, and and they are reflecting your um, your normal state of the application, right? Things come and go, and they are represented as, as services. Uh, then you have to be a little bit more careful when when developing your your components. But most of the stuff, um, also in, in that case, is taken care of by by using the right annotations. Yeah. And I, I think that that uh, part of that sentence is also the idea to say, I mean, yes, it, it used to be at least historically much more 
um, you know, important, but at least in your face kind of thing, right? Because because AM was doing um, in progress um, updates, so you had you had a much higher level of dynamism um, uh, uh, just doing anything yeah. on the platform. Right, um, and, and the way we're moving right now, um, we're going to a, at least deployment-wise to to much more stable and and uh, uh, basically no dynamic update uh, scenario. So that that hopefully really makes it so that what Carsten says is the is a new yeah. baseline. <laughs> it's <laughs> hopefully mostly put some tooling and and maybe some annotations and and uh, that. That should be it for the most. Yeah, I guess one thing I'd like to add as well is that if you develop your OCI bundles, the one thing that is actually quite important is to get your metadata right of those bundles, especially the versions that you export, the version ranges that you import, things called uses clauses. And, and in the past, that was kind of complicated to do. But as Karsten said, if you use the modern tooling that is, exists, uh, for OCI, you basically don't have to do anything. All that stuff is generated automatically for you, and it just it's just right, and you don't have to think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bounce on a, on an audience question that just arrived from Brian Cisco, which is kind of the opposite of that. Are there underused features of OSGI that you think more developers should should care about, or maybe stuff that we do use but mm, should maybe expose or advertise more loudly? Hmm. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> well, I think I think the, the the one thing which is which 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 you could say to it. I mean, I, I but it's uh, it's it's hard to express in a couple of sentences, right? But I, what, what I always liked about OSGI was the service model, yeah. right? I mean, that 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 did draw to, draw me to it uh, initially, right? and the and the nice thing about it is, and that's still I think even to that day hard to get in any other environment is it's not the dependency injection that you get in those you get you get, get in other places you can have services kind of thing and getting injected service components in, in other frameworks which are maybe well more well known or you know have more power but the the nice concept in OSGI is that you also have the provider side under your control right so a service can theoretically at least you know, you you are in control when you mm. provide your service. So that's a concept that is that is that is not typical, and that's probably why not many people really take advantage of it. Um, granted, at some it, it introduces dynamism, so it might be a bad idea to <laughs> do it. But but it, this is a really interesting concept, right? Because it comes more from an embedded world, right? If, if a printer is not connected, well, you don't need to yeah. have a printing service. Right, and and so so if you plug the plug out the printer, you can pull your printing service, and then everybody that depends on a printing service knows, okay, yeah. I don't have a printing service, right? So if you plug it back in, you can say, okay, now I provide a printing service. So you register your service again, and everybody that needs a printer service can 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 start, and and, and anybody that you know can deal with it dynamically can 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 update, right? So so if you if you make that that you know worldview part of your of your development model it it, it can be very interesting uh, and it, right. can, it, it can be used to good results uh, at least at least i know of a couple of uh, cases where, where where it does um again whether it's advisable or not i'm yeah. but you know, as, as, <laughs> I see the general idea is to say that people should really <laughs> learn about the the service model the OSGI service model, service service registry, and I I agree. I think that's a very powerful concept on this. It's it's not very complicated, but I think it's really probably worth learning about how it works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have another I'm question. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, we can okay. take. Uh, it, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have. The, it's a very short panel, so we have to be a bit mm -hmm. quick. Uh, David, uh, with uh, also a question from the audience: uh, Will there be any future change in OSGI considering Java Nine Project Jigsaw? What's what's OSGI right, so I, doing I think, about that? I think that's a great question. It's probably Carl is probably more qualified to answer that one than I am, since he was involved in the OSHA Connect spec, which kind of plays into that area. So, uh, uh, Carl, if you want to go first, that would be interesting. I, I, yeah, yeah, I can. I mean, so basically, I mean, the so on the one hand, I mean, it's ever since Felix Six, I mean, we 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 can at least run on on uh, on, on JPMS. 
right? So so that 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 was on Java nine uh, at JVM. So it was available well, as an important milestone to get get done. Um, but yeah, as David mentioned, we actually made quite some progress. I mean, we we have the latest OSGI spec um, uh, version eight uh, or R eight core. It's just out uh, since a couple of months, and uh, we actually support it now in Felix with Felix seven. Which is not yet available uh, even in AMS cloud service, but I'm 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 planning to get it. <laughs> so, but um, that has a, a new spec part which is called OSGI Connect, which which uh, um, allows you to uh, um, effectively represent um, things outside of the OSGI framework, um, like JARs on the class pass or uh, JPMS modules as bundles inside mm. the framework. That's why it's called connect. It sort of connects it into it, right? So that, that way um, uh, you can represent, for example, JPMS modules as bundles. And uh, uh, um, uh, we actually do. Um, you can write a connector yourself, but uh, that's part of the spec. But we have a sub project in Felix now called Atomos, uh, mostly done by uh, Tom Watson from IBM. Um, he's uh, also the Equinox uh, lead. Um, but um, uh, yeah, if you just use that connector, it basically will uh, show you all modules on the module pass as uh, bundles. And, and that, that's a very nice uh, blend of the world. Um, uh, it means you can uh, even turn your bundle into a JPMS module, pull it on the module pass, and then uh, uh, so have it linked up module layer wise uh, from 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 jpms and then the runtime parts so of the services and things like that still work inside an osgi framework and uh, felix not 7.0 but but the next felix version i just added uh, will have a module info so it, it can also run directly from the module pass without any modifications as well cool. and, so people and just should to add to, to add to that story <laughs> i know we're there go ahead just wanted to say, say one other thing in that Jigsaw or JPMS is officially called. It's really aimed at modularizing the Java, the JVM, right? And if you, you can use it as an end user, but I think if you use it as an end user, you find out pretty quickly that it has certain limitations that are really, as a developer, not great. So I think in terms of a future for OCI, OCI's modularity and services model is way superior to JPMS. So I think there's certainly a future there. And especially the thing that people found hard for migrating into OCI, which was modular, modularization of existing code, that part will already have been done if they mm. start with JPMS. Right. Yeah, so there's there's good, uh, interesting synergies, I would say, between these two, these two module systems, yeah. Yeah. Another question from the audience. Uh, so OSGI supports multiple versions of uh, having multiple versions of the same Java package uh, in, a, in an OSGI framework system. And in AEM, we're not uh, pushing that, I would say, or, you know, our tooling, some of our tools, I think, even make that harder, hard to, harder to do. Uh, Carsten, maybe, could you say why we took this uh, option? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> quickest answer is basically because it, it quickly gets complicated, right? right. Um, so you have um, one thing in, in two versions and then other other bundles using this and, and you might, and, and they might always connect it to, to the wrong one or, or those two versions don't share any, right. any state between these, these things. So that's why, why we thought we, we make it easier for, for developers and then don't, don't allow that out of the box. Right. So, yeah, we thought that that might make things too complicated uh, as a default. So, I mean, you really need to know what you're doing if you if you want to use that feature. Yeah. Yes. Right. It's, it's still possible. But you, but, uh, yeah. But if you if you have a legacy bundle that would conflict with another one, you could, I think, you could embed it in 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 you know kind of the adapter bundle that you want to use, and it has the same effect except it's limited it's available only in one bundle but uh, you know because i think the typical use case is you have some old library that uh, you have to use for for historical reasons so you can still hide old all the the old stuff into one bundle and that that would work right might be a workaround right, exactly. in many cases yes. yeah yeah Right. Yes. Uh, an interesting question from Steve. I think it's, it's Sorry, first yeah. of all, it's worth well to, no, to, to note. It's worth well to note that we started to sort of uh, allow 
um, the duplicate package scenario a little bit more um, in in the cloud version right now. Yeah. Right. Which I guess is is is, is partially because we um, because we can do better ahead of time mm -hmm. checking. And we have less of this dynamic uh, evolves over time, and, and the resolution graph changes over time um, scenarios. Right. right. So I think that that's partially why we started to allow it. I mean, it's certainly in in AMS cloud service, it's 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 more likely that you that you encounter um, that. Right. Yeah. For for whatever that duplicate means. I mean, obviously there are different versions, right? But it's a you know, side by side versioning of it like this. Yeah, yeah, so. right. Yeah, thank you. Um, an interesting question from Stephen Gosens from the audience: uh, If if AEM as a cloud service was built today, uh, would we still use OSGI? It's <laughs> it's a bit of a you know we're we're a bit biased because I think we all OSGI fans in this panel. But still, <laughs> can we? What can we say to that? Would we use OSGI or something much lighter or nothing? <laughs> now, to, to be honest, I think we would still use OSGI. Um, at least, let's let's put it that way, if we would do the implementation of, of the service with Java, and then we would use OSGI. Right. Right? Uh -huh. let's see. Because it, it, it provides you with these with these modules, and even if you're writing small um, small microservices, you can benefit from, from modules. Especially if you think about that you have three, five, 10, 15 microservices, then you can share the modules b between those. So yeah. I think from in a Java world, OSGI, definitely yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Someone, uh, Yuval, in the in the chat is saying, you know, we can also use Firefly, Adobe IO runtime, the serverless extensions more, uh, you know, and reduce the reduce the core of AM, which might still be Java. Uh, and I think that that's what we're doing actually. Uh, we took out, for example, the image processing has now moved out to Project Nui. So so, but still for the core of the the critical core, I think it. OSGI is still doing a very good job, and uh, and one thing I realized because of the shape of the EM, so the EM team is many engineers. Uh, I think it, you know, it's a few hundred engineers working on EM, uh, spread about around uh, several continents, uh, several cultures, you know, technical cultures. I would say because we, some of us come, many of us come from Day Software, but others come from other parts of Adobe, and they have moved into AEM. And I think the the, the module, the strong modular aspects of OSGI and of JCR uh, and of Sling have helped us a lot in this context because we can work with little coordination in OSGI. Once you agree on the interfaces, on the APIs, each team can go and build their stuff. And as soon as long as you, and you have to respect yeah. the APIs, uh, then you find. So I think beyond the, all the dynamic aspects in terms of of, of uh, software cleanliness, I think this helped has helped us a lot. Yeah, I totally agree. And and the other thing is like AEM has like a lot of modules. Like there are literally hundreds of yeah. modules in AEM. But everyone has a clear, pretty well delineated function, and it's really small by itself. So if you're basically coming new to the team, you don't have to kind of know all these 500 modules, but you can just start with one or two, which are small enough to get your head around to understand what they mean. And it's basically it, it keeps the product better maintainable through you know through, through time, basically. Yeah, I think I think yeah. I mean, I, I, that's the one thing to say about AM, right? It's a, it's amazing um, uh, uh, looking at the code base, um, and, and you know, it's, 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 some of that code is you know, yeah, more than, or more than that. Um, we still have libraries still, from still running back in really. the day, software right. times of a CQ two point five or something. I think we I did some debugging. It was a few years ago. Yeah. I did a debug a, a complicated problem on the on the graphics library that dates back to you know 20 years and then it was getting tricked by some new JVM yeah. functionality that was it was a fun fun week debugging that stuff. I remember that. Uh, so we we getting to the end. No, that will be my yeah. yeah. So one last question. Uh, uh, yeah. So if if you were to to look at software outside of the web context, uh, where where do you think OSGI would be a good fit? I know there was some, um, yeah, like I think like Carl was saying, it it fits nicely, like in an embedded context, or do, or do you know through the your OSGI colleagues 
of other industries which are using OSGI heavily? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, obviously, yeah, embedded, but um, I think OSGI is really great for any kind of middleware or server side entity, business logic type, you know, service. So it doesn't have to be a, a web kind of mm. back end, it can be any kind of back end. Um, but it can also be, as Andres Bot, uh, I think, mentioned on the chat, it can also be used for front end applications. The Eclipse IDE is written in OSGI. Yep. There are other kind of uh, rich client applications, front end applications written in OCI that have a UI. So it really doesn't, OCI doesn't dictate where it best runs. I think it, the, the thing it gives you is it gives you a very small and clean container for Java programs, whatever they are. And I think it's it's also very often used in in um, long running hardware, right? Like mm. set top boxes um, where you need dynamic updates, for example, or in in cars. Um, some automotive um, vendors use use OSGI inside their cars. So for for those things, it it makes sense because you can't manually go to each and every car and, and update the right. software with a <laughs> yes. USB stick or something like yeah. that. Right? Um, yeah, so they're, they're maybe using more of the dynamic stuff than we are. Okay, so we are over time. I'm sorry, this, so it was a very short panel, but very interesting. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, if you have time, we can maybe stay around for a bit in the chat. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been great. And I think we're, so we, because it was short, we can do a, you know, a segue at the next conference maybe. So Sounds great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much yep. and see you around. Have fun. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.